you're about to go for a very fast ride with me, Land Speed Louise. I'm a gal with a PhD from the University of Concrete and a 458 mile an hour world land speed record. The speed got inside of me as a teenager, growing up on the south side of Chicago, when I convinced the local street kings that they should let me drive their fast muscle cars. I wanted to drive, but I didn't have the money. So I traded my talents of painting designs on their various cars, and that's how I learned. This opened a door to motorsport, and I began driving and racing, and then eventually raced a 250 mile an hour, fire-breathing jet dragster all over North America. A few years of doing that, and that made me aware of automotive journalism. I started driving cars, trucks, motorcycles, test driving them for magazines and newspapers all around the world, writing stories and shooting photos. But when I went to the Bonneville Salt Flats for the very first time in the late 1990s, I met ladies who didn't just wear helmets, but fireproof underwear. And that's why I'm here talking to you right now. In 2020, I started doing a little research. I wanted to know how many women had actually driven on the Bonneville Salt Flats. Well, as I peered deeper into this female lens, my head exploded when somebody told me that this picture that I had taken of 20 female motorcycle racers had set more than 200 records. Just this one group. Well, that made me change my question right away. I wanted to know how many women had actually set records on the Bonneville Salt Flats. Three months later, I had documented more than 300 women, ages 16 to 80, from all walks of life. And these are not professional women. They're just like all of the folks listening out here. Many, many, many of them had gone over 200 miles an hour, quite a few over 300 miles an hour. And there was a couple that were knocking at 400's door. Who knew there were so many? These women had no idea that there was some kind of gender bias. Yeah, they went out and made the speed. They didn't realize you needed hormones or testosterone. <laughs> Nobody understood. And I'm supposed to know because I'm the sports subject matter expert. And I had no idea. And until I started asking, none of us knew. And I'm still asking because I am absolutely convinced that gender has absolutely nothing to do with skillfully operating any car, truck, motorcycle, plane or boat for that matter. It's down to two things and two things only, input and response. Good input gets good response. Bad input gets bad response. So what you think about this? This is a formal invitation to all the gals out there. You can do this if you want to. I'm here to firmly lay down a welcome mat to all of you. There are a number of women who will help you. And this is the place where you can do it. There are three places on the globe where you can really do this. One is in the Bolivian Andes, about 11,000 feet up. It's quite a ways away down in South America. The other one is Lake Gardner in the Australian outback. The other one, right here in the good old US of A. Interstate 80, right where Utah kisses Nevada. This place is so doggone big 
that you can drive your car that you drove here tonight in 100 miles an hour for more than a minute with your eyes closed and you'll never hit a darn thing. I know. I've done it. Fun. But just having the will to go fast has nothing to do with setting a record. To set a record at the Bonneville Salt Flats or any of those other places, it requires skill. And that skill means that you have to make two runs down that long black line on that speedway. It's a surveyed smooth course with certified timing lights. And after you make the two runs, the speeds are averaged, and that becomes the record run speed. Okay? There are no one-shot wonders out here. Bonneville, it would allow you to have great fun. There are people that come from all over the place. Today, many, many different types of cars, trucks, and motorcycles are out there and everybody's after the same thing. It all started with this, the Roadster. Just a simple street car that they peeled off the fenders and the hood, and they took out the factory engine and put in a high performance thing. When the World War II servicemen showed up, they had repurposed some of the surplus air, airframe tanks and the iconic belly tank Lakester was born. These Lakesters, ah, they bred the fastest cars on earth, the Streamliner, where they encased all the wheels, all the tires, the engines, and the drivers in slippery body panels. Today, my goodness, you'll see anything out there that will run. If you can dream it up, build it, get it past the safety and technical inspections, you earn the right to go to the starting line where you're going to ask the question and get the answer that they've been asking since forever. How fast will it go? How fast will she go? Ladies, this is your official invitation to come out and try this. There are many of us out there that will help you. I want to lay down this welcome mat firmly for you to walk upon. This is not like some other forms of motorsport where you're going to get sabotaged. And I don't mean unwelcomed. I mean that they will intentionally wreck you to get you out of the race and far away from the trophies and the glories. On Bonneville, you will be a direct member of the speed-making team. Not a pretty face on the sidelines or some arm candy on some guy. You will be part of this. And there are plenty of female role models that can help you do this. I'm one of these people. On my wall is this parchment certificate. This was given in recognition of our still current 458 mile an hour world record that we set way back in 2001 bringing top honors back to the United States of America. But I'm sure a lot of you have no idea how fast this really is, or have never seen anything go that fast. Let me help you. It's about 300 miles from St. Louis to Chicago, yeah? It takes about four and a half hours to get there. If I take you in our car, we're gonna get there in 39 minutes.
All right, the rest of this is audience participation now. Has anyone out there ever flown on a commercial airliner? Show of hands, please. Yeah? Okay, all of you are in the 400 mile an hour club. But you see, in an aircraft up in the sky, you don't feel that common speed. What is common among every single land speed racer is courage, curiosity, and the common sense to know when to take a calculated risk. Because this can be a dangerous sport. You can blow up a car and a bank account in one run, and then you get to think about it from your hospital bed. But Bonneville is more about begging for speeding tickets. Yes, begging. These little time slips that prove to everybody what you have done. This belongs to my girlfriend, Trish. She went from zero to over 300 miles an hour as a rookie in about three or four days and five or six runs. And if she can do it, ladies, you can do it. You are welcome on the starting line. You are welcome in the pits. You can walk right up to just about every single land speed racer and engage in meaningful conversation. But if you do this, I'm going to warn you, <clears throat> you may end up helping them make the next run down the racetrack because this is an all-volunteer sport. The return for every single land speed racer is this mental and emotional, gee whiz, heart-thumping rhapsody that belongs to you alone. Because you are proving to everybody watching what you're capable of. These gals are someone that you can look to. And I got a feeling you might see a little bit of yourself in one, if not more. In 1946, Vita Orr started it. She was racing this roadster as fast as those guys pushing her. They were racing their own cars. In the 1960s, the early 60s, Paula Murphy came along and she was the very first woman to take a jet-powered vehicle on the Bonneville Salt Flats and race for several miles in four inches of water. It just rained more than about 230 miles an hour. She never swerved. What's remarkable about this is that she had never driven this car before that day. In 1978, Marsha Holly showed up and she rode, the black and white photo there, she's kneeling next to a motorcycle streamliner, 229 miles an hour. Came back in 1985 and drove the car, 272 miles an hour. Because she had to shut up the teeny tiny testicles that had been grumbling that she had been a one-shot wonder. <laughs> Maddie Stringfellow, 16 years old. Maddie she got her driver's license, and then she earned her racing license before she got her high school diploma. And yes, moms and dads, boys and girls, those fireproof shoes, that's what she wears. And let me introduce you to sweet Sandy Vetter. She started racing her motorcycles at age 75. She filled up a basket full of records and quit at age 80. Uh, not for any bad reason, she just had it up. But this lady, she gives new meaning to the term speed wrinkles. <laughs> and Tannis Hammond, my girlfriend Tannis Hammond, she drove her husband's race car 
And she had three small kids at home. Set a few records, and then years later waited at the starting line as her daughter Tegan took off. Now, both mother and daughter both earn and have, to this day, a pair of plus 300 mile an hour land speed records. Let me tell you, that's some bragging rights at the bar. And gorgeous Delika, Jalika Gaskin Sigurdian. She's a professional model that gave up her career to be the amateur crew chief of the ELP racing team. During her 11 year tenure in charge, they set more than a dozen records in the vintage motorcycle categories. And that included when she was eight months pregnant with her daughter Sequoia, who is now two and waiting for mama to give her her first lessons. Count on it. We're going to end with Anita Strasberg. And I'll just tell you that Anita drives the family race car here more than 350, 375 miles an hour every time she gets in it. But I don't want to talk to you about Anita. I'm going to talk to you about Jenna. Nine-year-old Jenna, the granddaughter, will tell you, as she told me, with finger-shaking conviction, that I was on my Grammy's race car team ever since I was in my mommy's tummy. Go ahead, try and argue with that kid. Today, I'm going to stake my professional reputation on the next sentence. I have documented more than 350 women who have set 1,000 land speed records. Maybe more, but this archaeological adventure that I've put myself on requires a bit more digging to see who has shown up on the starting line. Which brings me back to the gals. Ladies, you are welcome on the starting line. You are welcome in the pits. You can be part of this if you want to. And no, you don't have to wear fireproof underwear if you don't want to. You can just bring your own car and take a ride. Be part of this program where you can see what you can do. There is no stuff or gender for this process that requires you to be a male or a female. I hope that I've laid down a firm mat that you can walk on and that you will come on out and you'll feel welcome to do this. I'm going to ask you, grab a helmet. Come on out. Give it a try. Let's see how fast you can go making a run down that long, black line. We're getting to the end of this. Just about at the end of the timing lights, I'm going to throw the parachutes here. I'm going to turn off. And I'm going to say that this is Land Speed Louise signing off. I'm done blowing your mind. Thanks for listening. Thank you.